Today we are building an enclosure for my Shapoko 4 on Combs Design. Like all of my shop projects, I start by breaking down full-size sheets of plywood into more manageable sizes that I can cut down on the table saw. I have covered my shop project construction in many videos before, so I really won't get into detail about the construction method. Basically, I just used pocket holes and glue for quick and easy construction. I'll put some links to my other videos so you can see how I construct things, but for now, let's talk about this specific design. This design has an upper section for the CNC and lower section for storage. It has this two level back panel that fits around my table saw riser that I built in a previous video. The bottom section has two compartments. The left side is just general storage and the right side is for dust collection and we'll get into those details a little later on. With the rough carcass built, I went ahead and made my fronts and used a Craig jig and some hardware to make my cabinet doors. I wanted to have really clean plywood sides, so I cut these sheets as full sides first, and then trimmed with a handsaw and flush trimmed with a router to get the full edge profile that we see in the SketchUp design. Next, I made my top panel, and there is so little clearance in this design because of the constraints of the space that I'm working with, I actually used recessed can lights or LED cans for my internal lighting instead of shop lights or strips that kind of hang down. Those just all got in the way of the spindle. I covered my whole project with Total Boat Halcyon Clear and this is my preferred finish for shop projects. It dries quickly and is super durable. Once all that was dry, I punched out the remaining wood for these light holes and flush trimmed all the tabs off from the CNC operation. With this, I installed my six recessed can lights and these were way cheaper and really a lot more sleek than the recessed strips. I'll put links to those below. The back side of this panel is where I house all my electronics. And once I made sure everything was working, I was good to put this top panel on. I had to make one side of the enclosure double thick with plywood. I made a panel and cut the recesses that I needed on the CNC and then used that as a template to flush trim the rest of the side after rough cutting it to size. I installed this bathroom exhaust fan motor and let's talk about why this part is particularly important. The exhaust fan we just installed serves two very important purposes. Number one is to pull hot air or exhaust away from this vacuum when it's inside the enclosure. The other way is to actually trick this vacuum into turning on. You see, when this vacuum is just plugged into a remote switch, kind of like a light switch, like we're putting on the enclosure, it doesn't turn on when it gets power. The only way this vacuum turns on manually is to use this manual button right here. This vacuum is designed to turn on automatically when it senses a load, most likely a tool, plugged into the power port here. And this is very convenient for sanders or saws or other tools that it's meant to work with, but it doesn't work for our purposes because I would have to open the door, reach inside the enclosure, and hit this manual switch every time I want to use it. So the second reason for the fan is that I am plugging it into the port here so every time I turn on power to the vacuum, that fan draws power and this vacuum thinks a tool is plugged in and the vacuum turns on. So right now, this vacuum is plugged in and is in standby mode, so it's waiting for either me to hit this manual button or to sense some type of voltage. I have this film light plugged in and you'll see when I flip this light on, the vacuum turns on. And then when I turn this light off, the vacuum turns off. I drilled a few holes to route my power cables just to keep everything nice and clean. This enclosure is built as absolutely large as it can be for the space I'm putting it in. I gave myself about an eighth of an inch of clearance around all the sides, so I only had a sixteenth on each side and a sixteenth on the top and bottom for any air. Next, I built a dust separator box that is used to keep the shop back from filling up so quickly and allows me to make the filters last longer and not change out the bags so much. 
This is simply just a six sided rectangle and I cut a recess on the front panel to put a plexiglass sheet in so I could see how full it is. This design is very similar to one by Sanford Asman. He made a design that is used specifically with the Festool products called the Festopper. I did not copy his plans, uh, but I did take a look at them and when I was kind of planning for this build. I'll put links in the video description below and I encourage you, if you want to build something similar, go buy the plans. They're inexpensive and tell you exactly everything you need to do to make this work. And because I don't want to steal his plans or look like I'm trying to give away his information for free, I'm going to be relatively vague on how I built this separator. Essentially, I made a box, cut a hole in the top, and then attached the top of a Home Depot bucket that this dust stopper separator that you can also buy at Home Depot can be attached to. The lid is removable and I used some quarter 20 threaded inserts to hold the lid in place when it is being used. Like I said, I'll be intentionally vague here. Go check out those plans, support another maker and designer. Next, I built the electronics enclosure that has my power center, my emergency stop, all my on and off switches, etc. This is just a plywood box with a CNC'd front panel for all my switches. I did some V-carving to label everything and then filled in those V-carves just with a pencil and it kind of looks like it was lasered on and is much easier to see. I got everything wired up and this is simply just four switches that are all wired to the hots and then each switch has its hot go to whatever it's controlling. I cut some vacuum hose to size and made some custom 3D printed adapters to connect everything together. This enclosure sits underneath my outfeed table, which is where I do all my sanding and stuff with power tools. So I also made this pass through that I can connect the vacuum to, which will then allow me to run a hose up top for my sander and everything else. And I also put a power pass through as well. I am super happy with how this enclosure turned out. It does exactly what I need. I maximized the space that I had. And I'm also able to use this vacuum and dust separator, not only for the CNC, but for all my top side tools like my track saw, my sander, my domino, etc. It's real easy to switch everything over and it is super convenient having all the switches and emergency stop in a very convenient place. I'll get into more detail in another episode about my power pass through and how I'm getting all of my tools on one power standard so they all use the same plug. Finally, as an update to my CNC build video, Carbide 3D took care of all of the issues I had. They sent out some replacement parts, they overnighted them. They really took care of me and I cannot recommend them enough. Thank you guys so much for checking out this episode of Combs Design. I will catch you on the next one.